Dear friends and followers, welcome back to my channel and in today's video we'll be talking a little bit more about reverse thrust and the power back procedure to answer the question, can airplanes use reverse thrust to back themselves out of their gate position? Let's power up those engines and let's get started. Before we get started with this video, make sure to watch my previous video about reverse thrust. So following part one where we talked about how reverse thrust works and its use after landing, today we're going to discuss using reverse thrust to back out from the gate position with the so-called power back procedure. Now just to clarify, the term push back is the very first part of any flight where the aircraft is moved from its gate or parking position to a taxiway in the meantime starting its engines and then moves forward under its own power after all ground equipment is removed. Now the term power back is defined as a pushback made completely under the aircraft's own engine power rather than using ground equipment such as a tug or even having the aircraft pushed by ground crew. <laughs> I'm not kidding, this really happened. Now the power back procedure is especially performed by airplanes with high mounted engines such as the Boeing Globemaster for example or turboprop aircraft. Now there are pros and cons to this procedure and it is sadly becoming less and less common, especially at larger airports and larger aircrafts. So why would pilots then choose the power back over using a pushback truck? Well in many cases it's actually quicker for the crew to simply start their engines and move the aircraft with directions from a marshaller rather than using a tug. Now think of it like picking up your car on a forklift or a tow truck and taking it down your driveway rather than using just reverse gear to back it out. And this procedure also reduces the amount of ground equipment entering taxiways as would be needed under a standard pushback. And for that reason some turboprop airports support the power back procedure provided that the aircraft, the pilots, the ground crew and the gate are approved for this procedure. And this clip here shows a Q400 turboprop start up its engines and power back out of its gate before taxiing away. This clip here shows the British Aerospace jet stream and notice how quickly the aircraft transitions from parked with its engines off to being cleared off the gate with both engines running and ready to go. And jet powered planes who are famous for performing the power back procedure, just a few to mention, are the MD-80, the DC-9 and older Boeing 737s. Now interesting side note, on most jet driven planes the air conditioning system had to be turned off during this procedure as sucked up exhaust gases could potentially reach into the passenger cabin. And the coolest use of the power back procedure I personally think is on seaplanes where the aircraft is often tied up in tight docks and can't be moved by equipment like a tug. So just check out this de Havilland Twin Otter reversing out of its dock and taking off seconds later. That's departing in style I would say. <laughs> Now you say, okay Joe, so why don't airlines use the power back procedure everywhere if it's so much quicker? Well sadly the power back procedure comes with a few more risks than using a pushback truck. When performing a power back there's an increased risk of damaging the engines, the aircraft, the building around the aircraft and most importantly the people on the ground. And this is because of FOD, the foreign object debris, which can be picked up by the engine's jet blast and get shot around the aircraft or sucked back into the engine intake. And this is why it is especially uncommon to see any aircraft with wing mounted engines such as the Boeing 747 or the Airbus A320 using this procedure. Due to the proximity of the engines to the ground and the huge diameter of the intakes on modern jet engines, a vortex of air can form which picks up any loose gravel, snow or small objects nearby and sucks them through the engine. 
Now just check out how much snow is blown around by the 747 as it vacates the runway with the reverser doors open and you see how FOD is sucked up into the engine at only idle reverse. Now imagine somewhere in that snowstorm where a few pieces of metal or someone's pen or clipboard or whatever and you'll see why this poses such a risk to the people on the ground and the airport terminal buildings. And that's the reason why you see the power back procedure performed mostly by turboprop aircraft if you actually see them perform it, which generally have a much smaller engine intake and move much less air through the engine itself. Now a quick visual question for you guys, is this Airbus A320 performing a power back procedure? No, it's not. I know it looks very much like it, but it's a super rare pushback performed via the left main gear. Now, if you look closely, you can see the little pushback truck under its wing. Now, there's also a risk of backing into something or off the taxiway as the pilots cannot see where they're going or what might be behind them. So they are relying entirely on the ground crew to act as their eyes and prevent collisions. Now just picture yourself sitting in your car, reversing out of your garage with no side and no rear mirrors and you'll get an idea why this could become an issue if not done carefully with the help of someone outside. Also the power back procedure requires special braking technique as there is a high risk when the aircraft is reversing it may tail strike if the wheel brakes are applied too quickly. Now besides the classic power back procedure out of the gate position, you can sometimes see planes backing up on the runway as well. For example, like this turboprop performing a 180 degree turn and then reversing using the power back procedure to use the entire length of the runway. It's great technique as you should always use the full length of the runway unless you fly for a or this Boeing 757 by TUI using the power back procedure after landing to perform a three point turn like you learned in driving school <laughs> on a relatively narrow runway meaning a 180 degree turn wasn't possible. But please do not mistake this with the backtrack procedure. I explained that in another video. And last but not least as always, this procedure is being used less and less to save fuel as the pilots have to add thrust to increase the reverse output in order to power back their fully loaded plane. It uses quite the amount of fuel if performed a couple of times per day. Now it may seem like the power back procedure is dangerous after what we've talked about earlier, but to be clear, any airline which uses this procedure will have intense training and procedures in place for both passengers and employee safety. So don't be alarmed if you see this procedure the next time you fly. Instead, get out your camera and actually record it because it has become such a rare sight. And if you do want to see them more on a regular basis, go to military airports. The power back procedure is still a very common maneuver among the Air Force. I know you now may think, why not install electric motors into the wheel rim, which will push back the plane. Now to much of a surprise, this has already been attempted by Airbus and it worked perfectly fine. Now I'm not sure why they've not yet implemented it. I guess it's probably too heavy, resulting in a higher fuel burn again. And because the tires accumulate a lot of dirt, there is a high chance of the electric motor to get damaged. I should do a video on that. <laughs> That's it for today. If you have any more questions regarding the pushbacks or reverse thrust or maybe some other aviation related question, please be sure to check out my other videos in my channel or ask me in the comment section below for the chance to have your question answered in a future video. So thank you very much for your time. Here's your checklist for today. Subscribe to my channel, check. Activate the notification bell, check. And follow my Instagram account, check. And don't forget, a good pilot is always learning. Wishing you all the best. See you next week, your Captain Joe.